All right, and we are live. We'll see who's on there. Um, good evening. I've gotten a lot of requests after I did the video for the rectifier regulator to show it again, what I did, how I tested it, how I knew it was good, and uh, you know things like that. So I'm sitting here at the dining room table with my Chromebook. I have with me rectifier regulators. I have a, let's see, there's a new one in the box. And over there I have an AC Variac. It's a, it's a variable AC power supply, which you can put AC from zero volts up to about 140 volts. All right. So what I want to do first um, is show people how you check a reg regulator rectifier. I'll start with the old one, the one you see here, and I'm going to put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. The one that you see over here, this is the one that I took off of the Skag. Um, all burnt up. You can see the, the burnt ends on it. It's all burnt up. And another, another stator end. The difference with this one, it's shaped a little different than the other one, but also you'll notice the bulges in the stator leads that are coming out. Those bulges are diodes. Sometimes the diodes will be cast into the rectifier regulator. In this case, the diodes are actually in the stator line. So if they go bad, you can actually um, replace them. So what you do to test it, you take your meter. I have a meter I got at Sears, okay? And you put it on the continuity or diode test, okay? And you can see on the bottom, there's a little picture of a diode. Okay, and what happens when you put on the diode test, if you touch the leads together, oh, try it again, and, diode, and you put them together, you hear a buzz. I don't know if you can hear that, the buzzing, okay, that means that the meter's working. So what you do, <clears throat> you take the output of the rectifier regulator, which is the two wires coming out, which is basically the DC output of the, regu of the rectifier so when the stator AC lines come in, for those who don't know how it works, I'll, I'll do a quick uh, discussion. You have two stator lines coming out of your stator, which means this is a single phase rectifier. The two stator lines come out with AC voltage, okay, alternating current, sinusoidal wave. The AC voltage, in this case from a Kawasaki uh, FC420V, should be about 26 volts AC minimum, 26 to 30 roughly. That 26 to 30 volts of AC coming out of these two stator lines goes into the rectifier regulator circuitry and comes out as regulated DC output. In this case, they're rated for 14 to uh, actually 12, a little over 12 to about 14, 14 and a half volts. So what I'm going to do is test to see what kind of readings I'm getting using the diode test in this charred regulator. So first thing you do is you hook up the positive lead of your tester to the positive lead coming out of your rectifier, positive DC lead. Sometimes they're red, most of the time they're orange on this type of regulator. So I've hooked it up. I have my all kinds of test leads. I love my test leads. So that's hooked up, okay? Then you take the negative lead and one by one, you're gonna hook it to each line of the stator to see what kind of reading you get. So put the meter over here. Uh, okay, hopefully you can see the meter. There you go. I'll hit the first one right now. Okay, and my, it's showing backwards in my camera, but hopefully you guys see it right way. It's 1,234 is the number. So that's the number coming off of one of the stator leads. Now I'm going to hit the other, and that was the burnt one, actually. Now I'm going to touch it to the other stator lead. Oh, and as you can see, Oh, where are you? Trying to read it here. There you go. 1,252. So it's around, you know, not exactly the same, but it's good readings. Okay. That's the first way you check it. Okay. Second way you check it is you take off the connector on the positive lead of it, and you connect it to the negative lead of the output of that. So the negative lead of the DC coming out and you do the same check onto the stator leads. Okay. So for the first stator lead, I'll try the burnt one. 
and I'll hit it. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Excuse me. I'm, I'm doing my demonstration. Uh, pardon me if I'm ignoring you. I'm not trying to ignore anybody, but I'm just trying to do my standard demonstration. So if you notice, the reading now is 541. Okay. And it will be about half on the other side. So 540, 541 on that side. Now let me check the other stator lead. And that's coming out 534. So to me, not knowing what the new rectifier regulator values are, since I'm getting good values off of both sides and both ways of testing it, I would say even though this had the fried connector, that this rectifier regulator is still good. To prove that, I'm gonna take a brand new one and do the same tests. So we'll put the old one aside. This is a one I got off of uh, Amazon, brandy new. And not bad, it was about $44. The dealer wants $196. Bucks. Um, I bought one, I got it for $44. And let's see what the tests are now. James, how you doing? Let me see who's here real quick. Oh, hey, Timmy, how you doing? James, Ben, Bill, Bob, everybody, how are you? I'm not ignoring anyone. I'm just showing everyone the tests. I explained the theory of stators and rectifiers, regulators, all that. I tested the fried one, which seems to test okay because the numbers seem okay. Now I'm going to test the new one because everyone emailed me. A bunch of people say, oh, can you do it? Can you do it again? I said, okay, I'll do it. No big deal. So bear with me. I'm not ignoring you. I just want the camera that's on my Chromebook to focus on what I'm doing. Okay, here's the new one. And as you can see, let me put the camera up here. We've got the output, which is the orange and black wire, which is the DC output. Should be at least 12 volts DC. And then I have the inputs, which are the two yellow wires, which are the stator outputs. Then you have a red wire and a black wire, which is powers the, uh, there's DC going out to this connector as well, because this actually um, goes to the PTO wiring. Okay, so the wiring in the big plug actually powers the PTO through a 15 amp fuse. This connector here, people say, oh, that's supplying your power. No, no, this part of it is actually going to a capacitor. And the capacitor is such that when you flick the switch for the electric PTO, it overcurrents real quick, you know, just for a split second. You want something to take up that current instead of a fuse blowing or your wiring melting. So they put a big capacitor, which the dealer wants over $100 for. But anyway, the capacitor is good. You know, I had a mega farad tester. I tested the capacitors. I don't want to show you mega farad testers. You could look that stuff up. Okay, so now we have the new one. So let's hook up these wires. As I was telling everybody, I have my test leads. Oh, I love my test leads. Um, if you ever want to go to someone's channel who does a lot of electronic testing, the guy, his channel is A-V-E. And uh, just go to his channel, all kinds of testing on tools and everything else, electronic. Really cool guy, A-V-E. Uh, forewarned, he gets a little uh, vocal uh, with some of his wording. So children, be be aware. But anyway, A-V-E, great channel. All right. Oh, and Maddie, I don't know if Maddie's out there. I watched... Uh, what's his name, um, Walter, last night. I watched the rest. It was not yesterday's video. It was the one just before yesterday's where he was complaining how a lot of people do repairs just for the money. And they say in their repairs, oh, I'm doing it just like this guy or just like that guy. I think that's what pissed him off was a lot of people were saying, oh, I do it just like Bob or I do it just like Chainsaw Guy or I do it just like Matt Olson or whatever. And they're not really caring about what they're doing or providing, say, Walt will give a saw to a logger for a year and say, bring it back when it runs lean or do this. He's saying how he does a fully thorough job, whereas these people are just in it for the money. And I agree with them. And there's people fly by nights, you know, uh, what we call taillight warranties, things like that. You know, once the taillights go on, the warranty's over. So I don't do that. I, I, I try and do my videos to educate people. I try and be entertaining with it. And hopefully someone will get something out of it. If not, you know, click me off. But basically I try and be entertaining and hopefully you'll learn something. As I called it to, in today's video coming on, you know, it's basically Bill Nye the science guy versus the small engine mechanic. So I'm trying to play dual role here. All right, back to business. Let's look at the new rectifier regulator and see what we got. Okay, so first thing I have to hook up my red meter lead and I'm going to hook that up to the positive connector for the DC, which is up here. And like I said, a good set of leads is that is phenomenal. Okay, so that's hooked. Get yourself a good set of leads. Even the Chinese ones are good. All right, so then you take the negative connector, and I'm going to touch each stator lead to see what value I get. 
So, and I'll, I'll bring the meter up to the screen. Okay, the first stator lead, I'm holding it here, and I'm getting, if you can see it, 11.55. It may be backwards because of the way the camera is, but 11.55.56, trust me, that's the reading. That's on the first one. The second stator lead, when I hold it on, should be the same, and that is showing 11.57. Same thing. Okay, good reading. Okay, so in that direction, with the electrons going positive to negative, that direction, we're good. Now we're going to try it in reverse, where we're going to come off of the negative lead coming off of the plug that goes to the capacitor. All right, so let's check the first lead of the stator. And it should be around 500 and something. And as you can see, 543. Okay, that's a good number. I'll check the next one. Should be close. And that one is 544. Oop, there you go. So this particular brand new rectifier regulator tested almost identical. If you go back to the numbers I did last for the burnt one, almost identical. So we know that this regula rectifier regulator is brand new. We know it's good is good comparably to the one that burnt. So I'm not gonna give them the new one. I'm gonna put the burnt one back in. I'm just gonna change the connectors to make sure it connects you know, correctly. Now, one thing I noticed on the SCAG, the connector on this, it's a weird connector. If you notice, it doesn't just go four in line like the new one does, all right? The new one, you see it's a six pin uh, Packard 56 connector, but it only uses the four outer pins. This one here, it's weird. It's a four actually it's a six pin connector but you have four going straight up and down and two going sideways i don't know why but anyway i'm only going to disconnect the one burnt stator lead i'll put a a good terminal on it quick disconnect connect it and that'll be that now to the fun part lucky how you doing buddy hope everything is good hope you got the donation yesterday hope the recovery is going great uh thinking about you buddy um okay now the fun part over here, we have an AC, variable AC power supply, or as is known in the industry, a variac, which means variable AC voltage. This one here, it's a it's pretty good one. I mean, they're brand new. They're about seven, 800 bucks. Uh, I get them on sale at flea markets. There's an elephant trunk flea market, they call it, in New Milford, Connecticut, where there's guys that sell all kinds of old electronics and tubes and things like that. Variable AC power supplies are great. Everyone's had one of these in their life. You know where you had one? On your toy train when you were a kid. Because even though AC, oh, AC is going to kill you. You know, Remember Tesla versus Edison? AC transformers are what power most toy trains. So if you have an old Tyco toy transformer or Marks or whatever, you probably have a variable AC transformer. The problem is it probably only goes from, say, 0 to 12 or 13 volts AC with hardly any current to hurt you. Okay. This thing here will hurt you. This goes up to 140 volts AC, and I believe it's a 20 amp fuse. So, yeah, this can kill you. So, I'm not too nervous. I've used it hundreds of times, but I'm going to try and hook it up now to put power to the rectifier regulator to show you what the output is. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this Variac does. All right. On the top of it, you can see there's a needle, and it goes from zero to 140 because it's rated for 140 volts AC. So what I'm going to do in the front, you'll see the plug where you can plug in a regular so uh, regular plug, grounded plug, or you can plug in test leads. I have test leads, so I'm going to use the test leads. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my voltage on my meter to AC. Let me get my cheater glasses here. Very fashionable in my wise, but I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna set my voltage on my meter to AC volts uh, 200. The only choices I have are 200 and 600, so I'm gonna set it for AC 200 volt. So because it, it's not gonna go past 200, I'm gonna hook up the leads and I'm gonna slowly dial up the AC voltage, sort of like Uncle Fester with a light bulb in his mouth. But here's my light bulb. Okay. So, and if most of the guys don't know it, if you look at a socket, when you see the small terminal and the long terminal, the smaller one is always the hot terminal or the, the black terminal, where the longer one is always the ground or neutral, the white one. So, positive lead goes to the smaller terminal and the black goes to the other. Okay. If you hear a brr and you see me like struggling on the ground, shaking, call 911. All right.
Okay, my leads are in. I'm getting roughly point, oh, point 0.2 volts just sitting there doing nothing. I'm going to dial it up a little bit. I want 26 volts. Okay. Right now I'm at 27.3. I'm going to get down to 26. I'm at 26.8. Twenty six point eight. Twenty six. As you can see, I'm at twenty six volts. So my variac is set for twenty six volts. I remove my leads. Okay. So right now I got my variac set. It's a twenty six volts. Put out twenty six volts. Now, the fun part. I have to get twenty six volts from that plug connected to. The new, I'm going to use the new one, okay, to the um, the two stator leads. Once I have it connected to the two stator leads, then I can check the DC output going to the capacitor and see if it's to 12 or 14 volts. Like I said, if you hear a brrrr and you see me shaking or whatever, I'm electrocuted and it was nice knowing you. But, all right, let me see here. I have more leads over here. I want to do this the right way. Let's see. Okay, I've got my electronic parts where I have all my leads and all my electronic tools and everything else. And in there, I have tons of tons of leads, all kinds of leads. It's always good to have leads. Let me take these off of here. And one set of leads, which I really love. Um, you've got these that have alligator clips on one side and then like a button and a plug on the other and those are great for using with your multimeters because they're easy to hook up all right so without further ado i'm going to plug my alligator leads and they're insulated i'm going to plug my alligator leads into the actually you know what i'm going to do i'm going to use i'm going to use my clip-ons i have these here that have the little uh clip-on wire on the end. Those are very good for terminals because the terminals have holes in them and they're insulated. So I'm going to hook those up first. All right, there's one. Here's the other. Okay. And the good thing about these leads, um, the end has the points on them. You can either have the stubby up oh, stubby point that you could prick insulation with or take off the cover and you have a full lead and I'll use these to stick into the variac. All right. Like I said, you hear buzzing, you hear me hit the floor, you know something's wrong. So hopefully all my friends out there will will bear with me. Hi Jesse, how you doing buddy? All right. Like I said, I this is for entertainment purposes only. I am not an electrician. I'm not telling people what to do. I am just saying I'm doing it and I'm showing you and hopefully where is, oh, there's the other one. Hopefully we can get some good results. Okay. All right. We got my two leads coming out of there. We have the clips attached, insulated to the stator leads. They're not touching anything else, so they won't be shorting. And I'm going to take those and I'm going to plug them into where they go. The small uh, terminal is the positive. Stick that lead in. Large terminal negative. Oh. Uh-oh. Something just went brrr, and I saw a little puff of smoke. So that's not good, guys. Hmm. That is not good. And that's AC, and I hooked it up correctly. So that's not good. So good thing I did that. Hmm. I only did it for a split second, so hopefully I didn't destroy anything. So good thing I'm doing it. And actually, the heat generated from that little brrr melted a little bit of the lead that I have. So, huh. Interesting. So anyway, I'm going to... Take the lead off, if I can get it off. There we go. Wow, you can see. Melted a little there. I'm not Bill Nye. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to now test 
this again since it just went for a split second and see it see if everything is still good with this i hope it is uh but it just goes to show that when you're i'll show down here just when i uh, put it together but uh just goes to show you'd hook up everything perfectly normal and now there's an issue who knows why but let me check i'll hook everything up then i'll show you what i'm doing all right so right now it's bad because the camera's on the front of my Chromebook. It doesn't go in reverse. It's a pain in the butt. All right. Set the meter for a diode. You can hear it. The meter's good. All right. I'm going to take the first lead. Where is it? Oh, fell on the ground. Ah. All right. I'll take the first lead. Hmm. And look at this, guys. Here's the lead I had before. The very end where that hook was melted off. So that was a little bit of current going through there. What thinking, and maybe an electronic guy can confirm this with me. I've got a variable AC power supply. Okay, it's putting out perfect AC voltage. I checked it on an oscilloscope. It's putting out perfect AC voltage. But if it's putting out too much amperage, that could cause this to happen. The small stator in a small engine, you know, isn't putting out the amperage that something like this probably is. So maybe the um, high amperage is what killed this thing. But I still, let me check this one here, make sure I didn't blow it up. And let's see what I get for a number. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to hook the positive line to the DC output connector. And I'm going to take the negative diode test line, and I'm going to touch each stator lead individually, and I should get a number. You can't see the meter right now, but trust me, I'll give you the number. Okay, the first one I touch... I get a number of 1150. Okay, there's a number. The second one I touch, 1150. Okay, so that's good in that direction. Now I'm going to check it in the other direction. I'm going to hit the negative side of the output. All right, and let me touch the stator now in both leads. Okay, the first one should get about 550. 539. And on the other, 540. Okay, I didn't fry it. I turned it off in time. It's still good. Just forewarning you guys, and hopefully this will help you guys out. I figured, my experience as an engineer, mechanical engineer, all this stuff, 40 years, and all doing everything, I figured if I put a variable AC power supply onto one of these units, I could test it. What I didn't account for is possibly on this AC Variac, it's putting out a lot more amperage than a regular stator from a garden tractor would put out, okay? Normally, the amperage that a stator would put out in a lawn tractor, it ranges. You could have three amp unregulated stators is as high as 20 amp uh, regulated stators on a lawn garden tractor. This one, since it's not really used to do much of anything except power the PTO, all right, there's a 15 amp fuse in the circuit. So I'm assuming it's probably putting out 10 amps because a 15 amp fuse, even half of that, say seven and a half, usually you double the fuse, you know, you're actually, yeah, probably seven and a half amp. Anyway, so this is still good. I know the other one's good. Um, I just wanted to make sure, and I'll be honest with you, when I hooked up that AC real quick and it went burnt like that, scared the crap out of me, okay? Because I don't want my house to burn down, okay, number one. But I'm still surprised because I did dial it in at 26 volts. 26 volts AC is what Kawasaki says to test the system at. So that's what I did. But I wasn't thinking about amperage. It's the only reason the thing could have did what it did was because of that amperage. So a little disappointed. I figured I'd get you know, good readings. I've used this Variac before, 
and I've tested hundreds of things with it and it puts out nice clean AC, but maybe because of the circuitry in these and the protections and everything else, you know, maybe that's it. Or what it could be too, because I was only using those um, hook connections. When you have a bad connection, as Craig will verify, if, if Craig's watching, you could chime in, Craig Timmons. If the connection isn't a nice, tight, solid connection, It'll create arcing. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe it was just because the connection wasn't tight. What I'll do for a future video, I will make up connectors that slip out of here and are good connections, okay? And what I'll do is I'll hook up a toggle switch to the uh, line going to the Variac so, or a momentary push button so I could just hit it real quick. And if I hit it and I don't see anything or hear anything, then I'll know it's okay. But it may just be the connections. It may not be that there was too much amperage. The reason I say that is when you talk amperage in an AC circuit, it's what the circuit's drawing, okay? You can't just say it's 140 volt power supply and it's putting out, you know, this many amps. It could be putting out as much as, say, 30, 40 amps, but it's what the circuit is calling for and drawing is what you see. And if the connections, like I said, I was using were a little loose, it could have arced slightly asking for more current because of the bad connection, and that's what caused it to go and scare the hell out of me. Anyway, good news is the part's still good. I didn't ruin anything. The house is still in one piece. The Variac's not warm or anything. Like I said, it only did it for a split second. It did ruin my lead, though, where the little hook was on the lead. It actually blew right off. So something went awry. I'm hoping it's something stupid. If anyone out there knows a lot more about electricity than me, which is probably most of you, chime in. I'll be glad to, to take any advice from you guys. Uh, like I said, I'm an engineer, you know, mechanical engineer trade by trade, by schooling, by whatever. And electricity was never my full bag, but hey, I understand it, you know. And like I said, I fixed a lot of stuff and hopefully this will help somebody show you how to test the stator rectifier. I'm sorry, the rectifier regulator. Don't spend $200 at the dealer, spend $30, $40 on a Chinese one and it works just fine. This weekend I did the snapper mower. It worked great. Guy's using it. He loves it. This weekend I'll do the... Um, one that this one came out of, which is a skag, and hopefully I'll return that and get paid and another job done. But uh, disappointing, though. You know, I put out these videos to, to show solutions, and even though I showed a solution on how to test and make sure it's good, I was hoping I could test with the AC to prove the functionality of the circuitry, not just that the circuitry is fried. So I don't see anyone else talking besides me. Any, what do you guys have to say? James Faust, you're there. I see Jesse's there. I see Timmy's there. Everybody's there. I got a few likes, so it must be for the entertainment value. Is my my hair sticking up any more than it did before I hit the juice? I don't know. But uh, anyway, like I said, I was very curious since I've used this variable AC before if uh, it would you know work functionally that I could test. And uh, as soon as I heard that little burp, I said, uh-oh, so not too good, but hey, you know what? That's how you learn, guys. You know, hopefully you learn where you're not uh, getting hurt or hurting anybody else or causing any damage. So, but rectifiers, regulators, I learned a lot from the exercise. I learned a lot from working on these mowers. I had that skag sitting in my backyard for a while, not knowing if there was another problem with the harness or the PTO or anything else. So, you know, I figured, what the heck, let me try it. Um, I am going to talk to some people I know that are good electric people and I'm going to ask them, you know, Hey, uh, you know, they're probably gonna say it was a connection because using a connection that basically is just a little hook of about a 24 gauge wire holding on to that terminal, not a real good connection. And everyone tells me if the connections are loose in the AC wires, you're going to get some arcing. So that's probably what happened. So anyway, um, it is the most expensive, Jess, it's the hardest to diagnose. And another thing they won't take it back on a customer return. Whenever you buy any kind of electronics, whether it be from an auto parts store, small engine part, non-returnable, because they don't know what you did to it. You could fry it and, you know, and then it's no good. So that's why I wanted to do these videos and talk about these rectifier regulators. You know, when I first found out what the factory wanted for these parts, $196 for the rectifier, over a hundred for the capacitor, 300 bucks, over $300 just for two parts that the, the capacitor, even though they do go bad, paper-wrapped capacitors, old ones, go bad. 
but I have a mega farad tester that I use to check the rating of a capacitor and both tested fine. In fact, I don't know if they're fine, but both tested the same. And since I knew the one worked on the snapper, I knew the one on the skag would work as well because it had the same rating. So they don't tell you the ratings because they don't want to give out any information. If they gave you the rating, they figured you go to an electronic supply house and buy your own. So I did a comparison, just like I did with this. Check this out. If it compared to the burnt one and they both had the same readings, I knew that it would work. And it did. So anyway, hope it was entertaining for everybody. Uh, a little sad that I got a little zap there. Not me, but the, the part. But it's okay. The only thing I sacrificed were the leads. I'm a little mad because I like my leads. Here's one of them. You can see this one here. Oh, where's the camera? Let me see if I can get a good shot. See the hook on there? You got a little hook, and the way this lead works is it's spring-loaded, so it can hook up. But look at how small that is, guys. That's like a 30-gauge wire. It's tiny, okay? It's a real tiny wire. It was probably because of the connection, you know? So I'm definitely going to try a momentary switch with good connections, good solid connections. With the Variac, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to chalk it up to a bad connection. OK, because I believe from everyone I've talked to that that's what caused these to burn in the first place was dirt and just a loose connection in the first place where it was arcing and causing all the amperage from the arcing and it melted. So um, these leads are available on Amazon, eight, nine dollars. You get like 10 or 12 leads. They're great leads. I'm going to buy another set because I love these things. But when you're testing things, low voltage and DC specifically, who cares? But you're talking AC out of a powerful Variac. I mean, just look at this thing, guys. It's like the size of a Lincoln Tombstone welder. I mean, the thing has got some serious, serious current, some serious uh, windings in there. So um, I looked up, I had a train transformer. I do have a couple train transformers, but they only go to like 12 or 13 volts. So I couldn't really use those. This has to be 26 volts uh, AC for what Kawasaki said is the rating of it. A little disappointed, got a little scared when it buzzed, but hey, what are you going to do, guys? Live and learn. That's, that's all it is. You know, they say, uh, you know, that's how we learn by by making mistakes. Um, dielectric grease, I do use that, Jess, but what's even better is antioxidant uh, grease, which is the black, black stuff that electricians use, especially when they have aluminum lugs going into like a power connection in your house. They'll dip them into this black goop, which is an antioxidant mixture. It never hardens. It always stays soft. That is better on connectors than dielectric grease because dielectric grease will wear off and it won't last forever. This black goop, you can get it at Home Depot too. It's called antioxidant paste. And it, it almost looks like uh, black, like silicone. It really does, but it's antioxidant. And it really, a friend of mine who is an electrician told me, he says, yeah, you can use dielectric grease. It's more for like point cams and things like that in old distributors, that kind of stuff. But the antioxidant grease is or antioxidant paste is better for preventing oxidation where the wires will turn green. The copper wires, when they get exposed to oxygen, a lot of times in water, it'll cause it to act like a battery. Um, correct. You have galvanic corrosion because the copper and aluminum are different points of the spectrum in the periodic table of elements. And with them being so far apart, it's called galvanic corrosion. That's why when you have a boat, you don't mix stainless with aluminum because stainless and aluminum, salt water, you have a battery. And that's why stainless and aluminum on boats don't go together. That's why I mostly use, use stainless. Um, and that's why you have what are called zincs uh, on, a, on a boat. You have a zinc anode, just like what's in your water heater. And because of the periodic table of elements, that will corrode first. It's called a sacrificial anode. Same theory. You, anytime it's electrical connection, you're making a battery, basically, and you don't want it to corrode. So to protect it, you have to protect the connection from happening, and that being with either a grease or an antioxidant. So... That'll be a good discussion for uh, another video, but thanks for that, Jess. Um, what else tonight? Uh, no work tomorrow, Friday off. I have a customer who called me up with an issue on a, uh, uh, what is it? A bush bush uh, mower trimmer. I got to fix that tomorrow. I have two Aaron's tractors that I have to take apart to make one Aaron's tractor out of. That would be something else. I hopefully can film. Uh, what else? Another guy called me up. He said his, uh, his Echo... Uh, what is it? His Echo Edger broke. And I said, what does that mean? The Where the blade connects on the end of the edger, he tried to put another blade on and he cross-threaded the nut and he stripped out the thread. So 
I don't know. I'll take a look at it. I'll either try and chase them or re-thread it to the next size lower nut and put another nut on there. Anyway, that sounds like a decent, cheap repair. So good, good customer of mine. So hopefully that'll help them out. But all right, I think I've caused enough damage for one night. Um, I thank everyone for showing up. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. All right, you know how to uh, check a rectifier regulator that is on a mower that doesn't have a battery that uses electric power for the PTO. That's one of these. Go on Amazon, 30 to 40 to 50 bucks. Don't pay $200 at the dealer. Um, showed you how to test it. I was hoping I could show you the output, but I still have to figure out. I think it's a connections, but I will definitely figure this out. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Contact switch, start, stop switch. Yeah, anywhere you have corrosion. Like I said, go to Home Depot or Lowe's and look and band mill. Look for the antioxidant paste. It's usually in the electrical section where they sell wires for like home wiring. It's a black paste. It's really, I mean, dielectric will work. It'll help you out. Don't get me wrong. I use it all the time. In fact... To prove my point, what do I have in my electronic box? A tube of dielectric grease. I use it. I definitely use it. But like I said, the stuff, the black stuff that's used for antioxidant probably be better, especially if it's going to be wet a lot and stuff like that. So James, good night. Take care of yourself. Hopefully all is well. Um, all right. If, unless there's any other questions, I'm going to hit it, guys. I've talked enough, 36 minutes. So everyone, I know people are subscribed, like you always come by and you always help me out. Uh, it's weird, my subscribers, I looked the other day and I've gotten like seven subscribers in the last two days, but it still shows 105 subscribers. So I don't know what's going on. Um, I hope so. You know, um, I don't mind doing electrical stuff, Jess. I'm not an electrician. I'm not certified. This is for entertainment purposes only, as everybody says. Um, oh, wait, I'll be like Chainsaw Guy. Those electrical paste not to be used for anything electrical. Okay, just like he says about chainsaws, not to be used for anything, any type of wood cutting. I'll say not to be used for any type of electrical apparatus. Anyway, disclaimers. I mean, you have to because what's the biggest profession out there? Lawsuits. So, and they sue everyone related to it. They'll go down to the guy who made the plastic connector and sue him. So, anyway, like I said, entertainment purposes, showing you guys how I test them. Uh, do it at your own discretion. Be safe, though. Definitely be safe. I've worked around electricity before at work and at home and everywhere else. So, I mean, I knew what I was getting into. I wasn't expecting it to go pop like that, but hey, it was a possibility. And uh, I gambled and tonight I lost, but I did the functional check. The functional check worked. That was good. So, all right, guys, take care. And uh, hopefully I'll get this thing buttoned up with good connections and I'll come back on at a future date and show you guys what's going on. So take care guys. Thanks for showing up. Appreciate all you love all you guys. And we will see you uh, in the future. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.